guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Carol and the name of my channel is My Blessed Nest. Today I'm happy to be participating in a collab. It's called the Spring DIY Challenge and it's hosted by Heidi Sonball over at Happily Thriving Heidi. The challenge is to show you at least one spring DIY, show you the materials you'll need, and then the process that you'll need to complete the DIY. I'm going to show you an idea that I came up with to make one of my crafts that I've done in the past multi-purpose. Do you remember when I did this craft? You wouldn't believe what this frame looked like before and the picture that was in it if you haven't seen this. So I will link that below and let me get started and show you what I'm going to transform it into today. So the first thing you'll need is to pick out an old picture that you don't like anymore that you would like to transform. A nice substantial frame would be great. Then you'll just be able to pop out the old picture and put in the new one that you create. You'll need a piece of poster board, just a regular pencil, a ruler, and some type of stencils unless you're good at freehanding your letters. Here's the stencils and I had to cut them all apart and pop out the centers. You'll also need the paint colors of your choice. Here's my crafting caddy that has my various paint brushes that I'll be using. I've taken my poster board that was cut to size and I hand sketched out the bunny ears on the left and I printed out the word hoppy with the font that I liked. Then I took the letters and cut them out individually and I used uh, graphite paper to trace those on to my poster board. I've picked out the stencils to spell out the word Easter. And here I am just placing the stencils approximately where I'm going to want them. And then I did use my ruler to find the center of my poster board. I put a little dot there with my pencil and then I was able to lay them out exactly where I wanted them so that they would be centered. I just spend a little time fiddling around with the letters. I wanted them to be in a curve just as I did the hoppy up above. It was a slight curve. And I just kind of eyeballed them up after I had my center point. And I used the little dots that come with the stencils to line up each stencil to make sure that there wasn't too much space in between them. For this project, I decided I was going to go ahead and trace out each stencil with my pencil rather than painting directly with the stencil. And that way I could see the whole layout and make sure it looked good and I didn't have to mess up and start over. I have everything ready to paint, so let's get started. I decided to use a real fine paintbrush and I outlined the bunny ears in a charcoaly gray. For the inside of the ears, I used this Princess Pink by Apple Barrel. To paint the word Hoppy, I used the color Surf Blue by Craft Essentials. I love this color. It's so fun. To paint the letters E and T in the word Easter, I chose the color Sorbet by Anita's All-Purpose Acrylic Craft Paint. For the letters A and E, I used Plain Old Yellow by Apple Barrel. And now I'm repeating my Princess Pink by Apple Barrel for the letters S and R. And here's a look at the finished product. Happy Easter! The next DIY I'm going to do is a recycling of these blocks that I made probably in the early 90s. They're not my style anymore and they are sorely in need of a makeover. So I've decided I'm going to use the coordinating colors from my picture that I made and I'm going to paint the blocks and then I'm going to stencil on one side the word spring and on the other side I'm going to stencil the word Easter. This is a really simple project 
I simply just color coordinated this to my Easter letters. And so two of the blocks are going to be painted green, two of them yellow, and two of them pink. The green covered pretty well. The yellow and the pink I had to do a couple coats of. Here's how the blocks came out all painted. I was really happy with the colors. And I have this really cool plastic stencil and I just lined up each letter and painted it with white paint. Ta-da! Here you go! There's my Easter blocks! I used the same process for the other side and here's how spring came out. So this is where I've placed my sign and my little blocks in our master bedroom on our shelf above our bed. And I have a large collection of clocks and I thought that all worked together well. Now let's get started with my last DIY for today. I was over at my parents house and I saw this beautiful rusted bicycle wheel. It's perfectly rusted, just the right amount of patina and I thought about painting it but um, my friend Melody who is a subscriber, Melody from PA, she thought it would be a shame to waste this beautiful patina and so did I. So um, I was worried about it being dirty and grimy, which it was. Um, so she suggested I use like a, a little bit of soapy, mild soapy water with a toothbrush. So I cleaned it up as best I could. And originally it had the axle, can you see this, sticking out on both sides. So I asked my dad if he could chop off that um, axle on that side and he did. And I have a funny story to tell you. Can you see that? He put this little piece on it. I don't know what it is and it's kind of shiny. He wanted to know if he should paint it for me so it doesn't rust. <laughs> I thought that was hysterical because I mean, look at the wheel. But I said, no, that's okay, Dad. I do like the rust. This is going to be a wreath and it's going to go on my back mudroom door. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to put it together and I have my glue gun all warmed up. So let's get started and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. The first step in my process was to lay out all my greenery and flowers where I thought they might look good on the wheel. And then I kind of fiddled with them until I had it exactly how I wanted it. And then I was ready for the next step, which was to actually glue it all down. Here's some footage of me gluing everything down with just a simple glue gun. You'll notice I have a little chopstick type thing that I use so I don't burn my fingers. I used a pair of wire cutters to cut off the stems of the flowers and then I glued them directly onto the rim so they would have something to hold on to. I got this twine at a thrift store for $2 and it sure has come in handy on multiple occasions already. Here I just fashioned a simple little handle and tied it into knots on both sides. And then I used my hot glue to secure the knots to make sure it didn't come untied. A quick trim with my scissors finishes the job. Here we go. I'm going to show you where I'm going to put it on my mudroom door and I'll take some footage of that for you so you can see it in place. After hanging the wreath on my mudroom door, I changed my mind. It looks so much better here in my entrance on my closet door. I love how the white of the door shows through and it just gives it a great background. Now that I've completed all my DIY projects, I would like for you to vote for your favorite in the comments below. Would you like to vote for number one, my hoppy spring picture? or number two, my Easter slash spring blocks, or number three, my old rusty bicycle wheel turned wreath. So please mention in the comments below which one was your favorite. Don't forget to check out the playlist. I'll have that linked in my description box. And I would like to say a special thank you to Heidi Sonbol for hosting this collaboration. Please make sure to go over and check out her channel as well if you haven't already done so. You will love her, she's amazing. 
If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'll link that below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me today for my string. Also, leave me a comment as 